Hey, this is this is indeed Walt from the Comic Book Men, and uh, you're listening to the I Walter Show. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Look up in the sky. It's a bird brain. It's a plane. It's I Walter. I Walter. Yes, it's I Walter. Strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. I Walter, who can change the course of mighty rivers, bend ears with his annoying voice, and who disguised as Walter Interanti, mild mannered janitor for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never ending battle for truth, nonsense, and the American way. And now, another exciting episode in the adventures of I Walter. Hey, it's every, everyone. It's Walter from I Walter. Yeah, I'm actually doing another show. I said I was going to only do it when I have stuff to talk about. Well, guess what? I do, and it's quiet in my house, so I can actually do one with the peace and quiet with nobody disturbing me, slamming doors or yelling at me. It is out three after 3 o'clock on this Wednesday morning. Wednesday afternoon, I should say, at, on the 24th of February. So, our, you know, February is the shortest month. There's only 28 days in this month, except for leap, leap year, and then there's an extra day. So what I really wanted to talk about, I'm going to move my mic over. Hopefully I don't do too bad of a job. Move my mic over and uh, talk about, let me just adjust my uh, thing. My cable got caught on something. I'm a complete mess today, literally, because, yeah, the cable's, like, all con- intertwined. So it is recording, though. That's the part that's important. I actually watched that film. I was going back and forth. Let me make sure I turn off my mic. I'm sorry, my speaker set. Not my mic. God, what am I talking about now? So, yeah, here we go. I rented this film finally. I've been going back and forth because I've heard nothing but bad reviews on that movie called... Green Inferno from Eli Roth. I actually finally rented it. That movie was really fucking intense, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So that that's my main reason for coming on. You know, today I actually let me actually pop that back up again because I my my other stories that I have I got a couple today, not many, thank goodness. I'll talk about those too. So I like. I had to take my mother to the foot doctor today, and that was fine. You know, hey, I've got to do favors for my parents since they're letting me live at home for a very ridiculously cheap price. I got to honor their wishes when they need my help. I got to help them. So I had taken my mom. She's got a lot of problems. She's got, you know, I'm trying to think arthritis. She's got can- uh, diabetes, like the simplest form of diabetes. She doesn't have to get insulin shots. So, obviously, that's one of the problems you're going to have is problems with your feet. So, obviously, somebody's calling me now, too. Of course. Oh, it's my one friend, Rachel. So, I'm sorry, Rachel, for not picking up if you actually listen to my podcast. So, I would obviously talk to her otherwise. She's probably wondering what's going on with me and my job. So, yeah, I go out. I take my mom up to this foot doctor's right up the road from where we live. And my dad picks her up. I just had to drop her off. I waited till he came. He had a meeting, a retirement meeting, they call it, from where he worked, where I worked still, so to speak. And I'm coming back. It's like, hey, I want to. That's really good. I went to Burger King. I got these Flame World hot dogs they now make. They are really good. They taste like the ones my dad would make in the summertime when when we uh, fire up our grill. I don't even know if we have one anymore. I think my mom threw one of them out because they get pretty funny, funky after a while. So these... These hot dogs they get taste like the same ones my dad would barbecue on their grill. And I'm looking out my window, by the way, right now. I got these idiot drivers. There's like a lot of fucking fog. It is raining out, so they there's a speed limit. I know there's a neighborhood right next to ours that they actually got so pissed off, they put up like handwritten signs. Listen, the speed limit's only 25. You need to abide by this because the neighbors are getting pissed. Our neighborhood, they fly through at 100 miles an hour. The speed limit signs say 25. And I'm surprised there's not more people getting killed. I guess Mike is getting in my nose and I can't breathe. So uh, that, you know, I just don't understand people. They, they just feel like they can do whatever the fuck they want to do. 
So I have a couple things. I was listening to Rush today and some of the things I heard about what these wacky Democrats are doing are just it drive me insane. Uh, one was a Bernie Sanders supporter, some girl named Hillary, which I thought it was Hillary Clinton. Uh, not Hillary. It was uh, Hillary had the same. This woman had the same name as Hillary's daughter. And I thought it was Hillary's daughter because I heard her voice. It was like, it sounds like a little kid. It's a woman, but she was going off. I got to talk about that, too. So somebody actually put it up because they they listen to Rush like I do. They're on my Facebook page. And it says Bernie Sanders supports supporter cries because of mean Trump supporters. I mean, this is ridiculous. This is a grown fucking woman going off about how she's upset, how the Trump supporters are treating Bernie Sanders so bad. I'll, I'll read about that a little bit, maybe. Chelsea. So I thought it was Chelsea Clinton, and it wasn't because the girl sounded like a 12-year-old with her voice. And I was like, wow, Chelsea is Ch- Chelsea Clinton, I thought it was. Really sounds like, boy, she's really spoiled. She sounds like a 12-year-old, her voice. It's a grown woman I'm talking about. So anyway, I go down after dropping my mom, my parents, my mother off to her appointment, waiting for my dad. I come back home, drive on Trooper Road, and there's some fucking nutcase woman who stays like 40 car spans on. I'm on a turning lane, which I'm actually already back so far. She's in the, the right away lane, and she's like, we're stuck at a red light. She's like 40 car spans back, back and she's driving her head up in there. It's like, you're a fucking nut job, you asshole woman. And I'm like so sick of people like that. These people with the blacked out fucking windows driving like they got their fucking head up in their ass. And like, I'm like the person they got to fucking worry about is me being on the road like I'm going to be the serial rapist. It's like, you know, you keep that attitude, that attitude problem you fucking people have. And you're in it like that girl who got that that guy as a roommate off of Craigslist that's now in a fucking coma. It's like, when do you fucking grow up, you fucking assholes? I got to support 20 per- no, 60% or whatever it is, 40% of my paychecks got to pay for these low-life dirtbags in this area who have no fucking clue, have their head up their ass, and feel like they're being victimized by the white male, which is me, and other people like myself. I'm so fucking sick of that, people. When are you going to fucking grow up, get a life, and realize that you're actually voting for the wrong party every time and continue to do it? Is it going to be that when you get killed, stabbed to death, shot in the head, or eaten alive, or when like our country is basically taken over by communists or or these Muslims? Is that, is that what it's going to fucking take for you to wise up and realize that you're a total fucking moron? Your accusations about picking on the wrong people is actually precisely wrong. I don't know. I just I saw this today. I'm like I am constantly dealing with stupidity like this. I had a friend today that really pissed me off, too. He says, oh, yeah, I'm going to listen. I've been leaving voicemails. I finally got to the point. It's like, listen, I'm not going to even leave you a fucking voicemail. Why do I fucking do it? I leave a voicemail. I said, listen, my job right now, the way it's hanging on a thread, not my job, the people that that I work with, it's a union. I work for this union, that this union that we have decided to, not me, decided to take on because they will save our job. Like we're we're better off with this particular union we have because we're guaranteed to have a job at the end of the day. Well, this particular union, which I'm keeping anonymous, it's not that hard to figure out has put more fucking people out of work. This same union that we are supporting, that we had taken on to help us keep our jobs, is the same fucking union now that there there is one company, one fucking company now, all their jobs from this union that was supposed to be so fucking good, their jobs are going to Mexico. They're all fucking going to Mexico. So, And then there was another thing somebody wrote, one of our fellow union members had also said, well, this same fucking union that is supposed to be the best union in the world has now apparently in addition actually put um, somebody. I know I just said, um, has also now put somebody else's on, you know, of another division of this same union for another company that they're, they've been out of work, they've been on a lockout. Basically, the company that they worked for, this this union that we are supporting, 
for another. These are two different companies from the one I work for. They've been on a lockout since August, and they came back with a tentative agreement. What's that fucking mean? Well, that means they're on a day-to-day basis that they don't know how long their job's going to last, and it's probably going to be at whatever their old contract was or probably even less than what their old contract is until they come with a finalized agreement on a contract. So, so the bottom line is they're coming back with far fucking less than what they started with. And they, they were been out for six fucking months. I tell my friend this. He, does, he just ignores it like I didn't say fucking anything. This is what pisses me off about people like that. You know, you, you, you say, oh, I'm going to listen to your message. You never even respond back unless it's something about sports, stupid movies, or TV shows. Like, I do that, too. I watch TV shows and stuff, but I try to pretend the least, if, of which I do listen. But I'm just going to say that I pretend I listen, which I really do. And I respond back in, in, a, in a way that, hey, yeah, I did hear what you said. I'm reflecting back on what you said. Now this is what I want to tell you. No, they don't do that. It's one fucking side so this friend calls me today. He doesn't listen to my fucking messages. It really fucking pisses me off. Then he tells me, oh, yeah, I got karma today because some woman used to give him a hard time. It's like, dude, you got to realize that it's more than, I mean, hey, it's great. It is funny. But the reason you have this pattern of losing your job is probably because you're getting karma, too, for not just basically paying attention to and why you're, you know, why people don't want to even be bothered with you. Because that's where I'm at now. I'm like really at this point. So I'm grasping at straws just to continue to have a friendship with him. And he says, oh, yeah, I got karma today. I just found out through text. It's like, you don't respond to my text. You don't respond to my fucking calls. But you now you, again, you just avalanche on information like I never said a fucking word in the last couple days, the last couple weeks. You haven't answered one fucking question on what I've told you about. You haven't responded to anything I said, and it really pisses me off, dude. So he says, oh, yeah, there was a woman that I used to work with. He was a fellow third key or a manager. He was a supervisor, and he basically said that she pushed her luck too far, which is really funny. Don't get me wrong, but I just get annoyed how you just ignore everything I say, and then you pretend like, oh, I heard you. Well, if you heard me, you would be responding back, wouldn't you? You don't have to say much. Just say, yeah, and say more than just... Oh yeah, I I heard what you what you're saying, but then you don't respond. You, you can say two words and I'm just ecstatic. I'm happy. You don't answer at all. You don't say a fucking word. You don't even respond in any way on anything I say. So he's saying like this woman that used to give him a hard time, she ended up barking up the wrong tree. She caught some woman trying to steal merchandise from the store he worked at, and the person that this lady he had a hard time with got herself almost strangled to death by this woman she caught stealing. So there's two sides of that story. Yeah, it's really funny that the woman you worked with who gave you a hard time almost got herself killed by confronting the person who was stealing, but at the same time, you still haven't answered one fucking thing I said. So if so, if you keep on talking to somebody and they just pretend like you didn't say a, th- a word... And I'm supposed to re- keep on responding to your stuff and you just ignore my stuff continuously? That's going to come to an end very quickly. And guess what? It did come to an end. When I hear you say, oh, yeah, I, I hear you. Your job's... The whole gist of this is I'm telling the dude, my job is hanging on a thread. And it's not because of me. It is simply because of the union we are sub- having us uh, or having that we're paying all these union dues to help help us help help us be, in, you know, they're supposed to be supporting us to keep our jobs is not doing their job very well, not only for us, but for other companies. So all these fucking companies that hired this union that's supposed to be so terrific are now going to be, they're, most of them are unemployed. I mean, you got to see, listen, there's a, there's a pattern here that this supposed stronghold union is not doing a very good job on what they're supposed to be doing, which is saving your job and getting you decent benefits and have and maintaining you having a job that pays well enough that you can support yourself. That's not happening right now. Now, the bit, the major issue with this company, by the way, or this union, by the way, is they are, they're like 
the brute force. Like they're the thugs. They're like the the worst of the worst of the mafia. Kind of like the way that's how I can I interpret it. Like they go in with brute, you know, they come in with brute force. They threaten people, and then they say, "Okay, this is what's going to happen." And then the, these companies say, "Well, okay, you can say that," but when everything's all said and done, they're just the company. These companies are just telling these this union, "Go fuck yourself," because we're not going to give you these unreasonable demands that you're asking for us from us right now. That's what's happening. So that just that really just. I don't know. It just and and that to me is really serious. My fucking job's on the line. Sorry, I just had something bother me on my mic. That's what you heard. I was pulling a piece of lint off my mic cover. The dude like just ignores me, and I'm supposed to like just constantly hear a one sided story on how his life is going. And like I don't, I'm like not even, I'm non existent. I'm not like a fucking shrink who's getting paid to hear your fucking bullshit every day, dude. So, I am just ranting on that, and I'm sorry because that's actually not what I wanted to talk about. I did want to talk about, that is going to be, the title of my theme today is The Green Inferno. It came out last year. My one friend, Ryan, wasn't seen it, or a friend of a friend, Ryan, the guy who who's really cool. He's the one, a friend who had made that movie called agony i had to think about it for a second it's been a while since i've seen it and ryan really did not like the green inferno i on the other hand now maybe it's like most people are gonna say the green inferno got like the worst fucking reviews i'm looking at right now on the tomato meter it got 35 percent not even fresh it's just being a, um a luke not even lukewarm it was like ice cold movie 33 percent of the people liked it and it's like you miss the fucking point on what this movie was trying to say. And it, to me, I like Eli Roth. I've liked most of his films, no matter... Don't forget. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm looking at something. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> on stuff I have posted on TripAdvisor. I'm actually going up on my ratings for all the reviews I did. It's helped a lot of people. I made, like, I think 10 reviews now. It's really helped a lot of people. Some of them top 20% now on TripAdvisory. Woo-hoo. So anyway, I'm watching Green Inferno. I rented it finally last night. I think it was like six bucks to rent it. And it was like, okay, I could buy the movie for 15 or 14 bucks because it's not really doing that well. And the thing is, people don't maybe like about E.I. Roth, which is the complete opposite on how I feel about him, is I'm like looking for the proper word. I was going to write it down. I totally fucking forgot. So I had to look it up. I consider Eli Roth's movies, and this is for every movie he's made so far, as being, because I looked it up, and there is a word like this at least, realistic fiction. Like, I wanted to call it reality fiction because his movies are based on what could really fucking happen in real life. And he just takes it the next step. Now, you're probably saying, what are you talking about with Eli Roth? Eli Roth, his first film, I think, I'm not sure if it was his first film, the one I first remember from Eli Roth, was that movie called Cabin Fever. Now, that movie scared the shit out of me. It was definitely a well-produced film. I liked it through and through, and what was the main premise of that movie? This is where it goes into reality fiction. Like, this is stuff that really can fucking happen in real life this is what eli ross movies and this is what makes them that much more intense and very very scary to me because these are movies i would buy from eli ross as well i actually almost all his movies i would probably buy if i ever decided to do it i would would like to uh, like own the eli ross collection of films because his movies are planted on reality and it just takes the next step level so it's not that these movies are like far fetched and unrealistic. They are just based on true reality and pure stupidity on the human mind and how far he takes it the next step to basically drill in your head. This stuff is not fake. This is real, but he takes it to a step that is so intense you have to like actually listen to it. And that's the same thing with Green Inferno, and I'll go into that in a minute. 
Now, cabin fever was basically, I didn't know it really existed. I thought this was just a plain, really gory horror movie that could not possibly fucking be true. Well, I hate to tell you, yeah, it's something that happens in real life. What was cabin fever the main premise? Well, it was infected water that caused people to get something that is very real. It does happen. I've seen articles. This happens when you get surgery. Not that this happened in the film. It is bacterial uh, bacteria that basically flesh eating bacteria. Like there's been times, not in the movie again of the cabin fever, where doctors have left instruments inside of patients after they sewed them up, or something else, or you get that from being exposed, being in an operating room too long, instruments not being cleaned properly, or just again being open too long on a surgery that takes hours. You have that possibility of catching what's called a bacterial flesh-eating disease, and it literally turns your flesh into a pile of fucking pus. So there you go in a nutshell what the movie of Cabin Fever was about. Again, it's a movie like I mentioned. It's a film that basically slaps in your face what can really happen in real life. So his movies aren't about... Zombies coming back to life. They are not about monsters that kill people. They're not about fictional, not fictional, um, cartoon characters from comic books that basically are serial killers or anything else. His stuff is planted more on reality based than anything else. And that's what people don't like to hear. He actually does take it the next step that makes it extreme. But I mean, you even look at it. Like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre was based upon something that actually really did happen. His stuff goes one step further. He takes real situations in real life, and he takes them to the next level that is turns it into a horror film. But again, his horror is based on reality, not science fiction. His is on science fact. Now, you could disagree with that all you want, but I'm telling you, his stuff is based on science facts. Now, you take the other movies he did, like the Hostel movies. Do you really think that that is not going on in real life? He basically took what would be considered like snuff material, and he took it to, had taken it to enough level. You got people, the whole thing, not that that was a snuff film at all, but the whole purpose is you got people who are so, like that 1% who is so filthy rich, that they get so extremely bored, they will go to a level of basically, just for their own entertainment, torture people to death. Like, torture them and put them through extreme pain just for their own pleasure because they are so fucking bored. You don't really think that stuff like that could possibly happen. You don't hear about it because if they did get caught, which they probably pay off the right people, I would consider that his hostile films are definitely something, and a hostile basically meant means not torturing people. A hostel basically is a place you would find. It's mainly in Europe that you have a place to stay. They probably have in, in the United States as well. A place you can basically, you know, make camp or whatever. You can sleep at a uh, at a place that you really pay minimal amount of, of money to stay at, like an inn or something else. But they just basically take people right off the street just so you have a place to sleep and stay. They're hostels. So, yeah, hostels do exist. Now, the, the the way he had portrayed a hostel, that these hostels could be possibly, I mean, that could actually be true, could be a setup for something else going on underneath. Like, these people can just mysteriously, you know, people like these kids that are from, you know, the United States go over to Europe. My brother did that for, like, I think a month or two when he first got out of college, the first time around, my brother from Washington, he basically backpacked through Europe. So where is he going to stay when he's backpacking through European countries? Well, basically, you're going to stay at a place like, basically, you're going to stay, I just repeated myself, at a, ho- a hostel where they're going to take you in for the night, and you can just go back out and do. So that that's something that could really happen. Green Inferno, though, like I was, I was starting to mention, was like one of those films, like, I really didn't want to watch it because the way they portrayed this film, it remind me of those old horror films from back in the mid seventies, I think. And I'm trying to think like Cannibal Holocaust, and there was another one. There's two different movies, and I, I kind of said to Ryan, I said, "Well, the, that movie Green Inferno just reminds me of a direct ripoff 
of the cannibal holocaust and the other one i can't remember the the name of it but like basically movies about cannibals yeah it is about cannibals don't get me wrong but the premise is more political than anything else i would say in my opinion the money uh, it looks like the movie basically bombed but the movie is definitely very intense and i will go into that i mean i'm trying to figure out how much it actually costs to make it said the box office had only made seven point two million dollars. Trust me, that movie is not for the screamish. Um, last night it bothered me so much. I mean, again, this is a movie in reality. This is a, a reality horror movie. This is a reality fictional movie, in my opinion, of Green Inferno. Maybe that's why people don't like it because the whole premise of this film was not what I expected. I like said that from like when I first started watching. I was like. Okay, this is not what I expected to see in this movie. This movie is actually a real film. And the thing that, well, it actually frightened me so bad last night, I could not sleep. All I could think about was this movie and what happened. The way these these people that were total idiots got tortured so bad. Well, they got eaten alive, to say it in, in layman's terms. It bothered me so much. I actually had, which I haven't had in a long fucking time, I had waking nightmares. Like, I was hallucinating from this movie. So badly that I started screaming on the top of my lungs when I was trying to sleep because I was so f- messed up from watching this movie, Green Inferno. So, okay, you can say, oh, this movie wasn't that great. It got really bad reviews. Well, you know what? Most of these reviewers are probably left-winged wackos that don't like his political statement in this movie. That's what I'm, my guess is. Because Eli Roth is one of the best... In my opinion, he's like up there as being one of the best horror. I'm trying to think of the right word. He's one of the best horror directors in, of today's times. His movies are very gory, though. Don't get me wrong. They are extremely gory. But they are set on reality. And it, it, it actually does give you a definite real punch in the face on reality. Like, okay, are you this fucking stupid? Not to see that this could really happen. And this is more so true because the reason I'm thinking about this Green Inferno. Now, these were with cannibals that lived as tribe. And there are tribes in on this planet that haven't even been discovered. They're still haven't been civilized. They're like they're still living from probably like a billion years back. I'm, I'm guessing that they haven't. They, they, they don't know anything about having they're they're basically tribes that are around the globe they are that, that have probably been I've seen documentaries where they discover these tribes that didn't even know they existed anymore and they just let them go because these people are very very early primates that still exist on the planet today and this is what this whole green inferno is about there's certain things you just don't fuck with and this is what this movie did and it's about a bunch of Kids on a campus, a college campus, who are, are these fucking liberals, who would, you know, are the Bernie Sanders slash tree huggers. I mean, literally, he couldn't make it any more clear, Eli Roth, in this movie. He did an excellent job on the film. I can't even remember where most of the stuff was shot. I think the people who wrote this film and directed it, they did... They, they didn't get enough credit. This is like, to me, this is a sleeper movie. It's going to go down as being one of the worst films probably for the next decade or so. And then people are going to realize, you know what? They were actually on to something that we just were too ignorant to accept or acknowledge because it was based on reality. So the way I also incorporated this film on these this tribe, I don't know who they got to play these actors at these of, of these primates, but they did an excellent job and they were very scary people. They were in, and I'll go into that in a second, but no to remind me of this is what I'm trying to get to. If you ever, I'm trying to think right now. Okay. With the terrorist in the Islamic terrorists where they behead people, though, which was recently they beheaded a bunch of children, little kids, they cut their heads off and I forget the reason why. Well, this this movie is on that line. Now, if you're saying that Green Inferno is not close to reality, then you're also living in La La Land where you also think that that's all propaganda when you find these Muslims who record 
the uh, record their executions of decapitating women and children, and and they're proud because they're doing it in the the name of their belief in their god. This is how close this movie is to reality. Not that this is about terrorists. This is about a primitive tribe that they didn't know existed in this forest, and I can't remember exactly where. I'm trying to look. And how you don't fuck with them. Now, there's two sides because the political side will say, okay, that's the Democrat side saying, okay, well, we shouldn't we shouldn't disturb these people who are primates. Well, yes, you're right about that. But this goes one step further. The ones who are going in and fucking with these people that basically were, are the same, live in the same lifestyle and are in the same mind frame as they were probably millions of years ago is what this whole film is about. So I'm like looking at it right now. This is from the from the horror director Eli Roth, acclaimed horror director Eli Roth. Green Inferno follows a group of students, activists who travel from New York City to Amazon to an this Amazon area to save a rainforest. So again, like I said, it's a bunch of these tree huggers. This one girl gets involved. She's got a rich father, and her father doesn't approve of it, and she basically is the only one who survives at the end of the film. There is a group of at least 20 people, and they all get brutally killed. I mean, it's not even... You can't even barely watch. I couldn't watch. It was just so disturbing, but it was so realistic at the same time. This can really happen, folks, in real life. This is no joke. So that's the part that really bothered me. I just don't understand how this film did not get a better review than it did because it was an incredible film. So it was just very gory, though. And you got these kids, you know, it's the millennial group of people who really believe, oh, we should vote for Bernie Sanders. We should vote for libertarian, you know, the libertarians. We should vote for free stuff. I mean, this is the mind frame of the people who want into this forest, this rainforest to save Save the trees and save this early pop, you know, this early primate group of cannibals. Now, that that's like that's one part of it. And it's horrible. One part of the film, they try to take down like this militia group or whatever that were cutting down these trees, which were basically almost like guerrilla warfare that were protecting these guys that were trying to cut down these rainforests. And now this is realistic, too. This has really happened. There's places they try to do this stuff. These guerrilla warfare people, though, sabotaged a plane that was a small little plane that they had taken into this Amazon, you know, this Amazonian era, these, these good people. So when they t- had taken off, they protested by chaining themselves to the equipment, the, the, the equipment that cu- cuts down the trees, and blowing up the machinery well, the people who did not like it, these these guerrilla groups basically sabotaged your plane. Their plane blew up in flight, which kind of remind me of that movie Final Destination, which is another movie. The original Final Destination is a very realistic movie because that part in the beginning of the movie was realistic. That could happen. It's very rare, but it can happen because you've heard of some really bizarre plane crashes. But you take it from the perspective of those people on the plane, the last thing they're going to see is going and, and de- being being depressurized and the plane pl- blowing apart, which has happened many a times. Not that many times. Not as many times as what happens with car accidents. But when it happens, it's the it's like hell. It's it's like hell on earth for those people. So that happens, and you've seen this plane that, that gets sabotaged when it takes off. And it blows up in midair. And those people are being flo- like blown all over the place. They're being sucked out of this plane. It's like a little tin can. Everything about that film of Green Inferno was realistic. I think that's why people didn't like that. But this film, no matter how you look at it, is really just attacking these people. Are they the, you know, the millennials, the tree huggers? And the ones who are the Bernie Sanders slash Hillary Clinton supporters. I don't care how you look at it. That's how I perceived it. And I really will stick by that. So these people are beyond idiotic. They think, oh, yeah, we need to 
stand up for what we believe in. You know, like in the early 70s, the late 60, 60s, when you had the hippies who would tie themselves to trees and go to Woodstock. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but total nutballs from this university, I guess, apparently in New York. It's a, it's a fictional movie. I wouldn't even call it science fictional. It's a fictional movie because it could really happen. And they end up, you know, taking a plane to, again, this Amazonian landscape, tie themselves to equipment and trees. Oh, you don't want to blow this stuff, but this is not fair. And the one girl who actually was the main character in the movie, the only survivor, she wanted to go there because she felt like these pri- primitive tribes treat women like shit. So she was like one of these... Femi- you know, feminist. I'm not going to call her a feminazi because I don't think that was her whole purpose. But she was a feminist. Here's the L.A. Roth with some of the, the primates. I don't know if they were for real or not because they could have probably got a tribe that actually was willing to work with them. A real tribe. I don't know. I'd like to find out. Because, I, I mean, Eli Roth, I, I really think he's just, he's not given a fair shake on what he does for film. So, yeah, I mean, this film is extremely, I mean, I think it's a must-see film because I think people, you know, like, I would call this movie the scared straight film of what people of today really need to fucking focus on. I'm, I'm not even kidding. They really need to see this film for what it really has to say. And it does say a lot because maybe you would think differently before you would even vote. That's just my opinion again. And if you don't like it, that's you. That's not me. That's on you. If you don't like the film, you find this film like, oh, it's stupid, then you're not actually looking at the film the way that Eli Roth put it together. And even the director, I'm tr- the producer, or the guy who wrote it, I mean, it looks like, j- j- I can't say the guy's name, but the guy who wrote this film did an incredible job. Eli Roth just es- executed this film so well. And I, I just, I'm just mad that it didn't get a better review. I really am mad because Eli Roth makes he's a he's an intelligent guy. So, but these people go in their train their plane gets torn apart. Some of them get killed on impact. One guy gets from the the plane landing in a tropical rainforest. He basically gets his head smashed through from one of the trees that the, it, the branches it lands on. It like goes right through the fucking guy's head. So it's like beyond gross. The one guy who you feel really bad for, it's like the typical guy that reminds myself he was some heavy, dopey looking guy who just went along with this stuff because he figured it would help him get laid. And that guy, I can't remember the character, even if it shows his name, it's his cast, is the first one who gets cannibalized by these these this tribal group. And it is so horrible. I mean, it's beyond... Maybe I should tell people just so if you're, like, really weak at heart, you won't want to see this. But this man, he gets hurt. He tries to, like, take the, the main character, this girl, under his wing and encourages her to become part of this group that goes over to this rainforest. Well, that guy gets killed. He's like the guy, like I said, he's like the norm... He's the guy that we all can relate to who have no luck with women and who's just really nice and just gets constantly shit on. Well, the main tribal person in this group is this this woman. She's like, um, I don't want to say like a witch doctor or something, but that's what it kind of reminds me of, of this tribe. She's the worst one of the group. She's the one who dictates everything to everybody else, which is kind of funny because the main girl from this college campus who went along to this trip in the Amazon in this movie She's the one who wanted to go to this rainforest to find these primates because she said, oh, the way they they treat women is horrible. Like the way they, I forget what they call it. It's something like she learned in one of her college classes how, you know, it's like one of these left-wing liberal college professors that say, well, women in these third world countries still get, what do you call it, their, their – um, not slaughtered they get their their vagina basically mutilated and th- this professor says yeah that's still normal in these third world countries where they mutilate the mu- mutilate the woman's vagina so this one girl who's the college student the main character i wish i could find her names i don't have to see if i can find it somewhere else because they 
all these characters, all these actors did a really good job. I see the pictures of the girl. I just can't find the girl's name. So she like, oh, I got to go and, you know, I got to stand up for these women because they don't know what their rights are in this third world country. Well, guess what? This this third world country with these these. What was I calling them? These headhunter slash. What was the name I, I gave them? Cannibals. The main tribal mem- the main leader of the tribal group was was a woman and and she's the one who's actually mutilating the other females, the younger females. She's the one who mutilates their vagina. And the the main protagonist in this film, because I'm looking now at the names, because that, that main girl was really good. I'm just I just don't understand how this movie did not do any better than it did. It got like the worst reviews. Okay, I see her name. She's actually like the main actress. She looks really different in real life. Like her publicity shot, publicity shots. I don't know how she wanted to do this film. I give her credit. It looks like Lorenza Izo or something. She, I think she's the main character. She, do, I mean, all these actresses. I got to give them like a high five for the job they did on this film. She played the character of Justine. She's the main character. She's quote unquote the lawyer's daughter. She's the only survivor, and the only reason she survives is because she her her intentions were like were good. But she was like one person who got sucked into, you know, oh, I got to believe what these professors say. I got to believe these militia, these groups that gang up and wanted, you know, these these groups that are the new hippie group or the new ones that are the millennials of this century. She did a really good job. But the one guy, I wish I could find his name who gets killed, like the first one who gets cannibalized, the main tribal leader who's this woman this older lady because i guess it's in these tribal groups it's the elder who's in charge he gets his eyes scooped out of his head while he's alive here is his name the guy's name his name is he plays johanna i think yeah johanna or something he his actor's name is aaron burns that poor guy i mean i from that point which was in the very early beginning of the movie I felt like this movie was so intense. I mean, it just slaps it. He gets his eyes scooped out of his head, and the, the tribal leader woman, she eats them one by one. She then starts cutting off his arms. He still scream and cuts out his tongue and eats it, eats her his eyes, and then cuts off his limbs and eats those, too, and they cook them up. Now, the one guy who was the head of this group, who was the worst, the head, not, the head of the the college campus group that takes these people into this Amazon thing. That guy's a real asshole. That actor does a great job. He's the one who's like, well, at least they took him first because now we got a couple days that they're not going to be trying to kill us and eat us next because this guy that Johanna played was so like a hefty guy. They said, well, we're going to be, they're going to be eating him for at least a a week. So we're good for a week that they're not going to be coming after us. Well, lo and behold, okay, the mailman's coming to the door, so I'm going to take a pause real quick, folks, and I'll, I'll start up in a second. Okay, I'll talk to you then. So, taking a breather right now. Okay, I am back again. I apologize about that. The mailman came to the door. I actually got my blind dead collection in the mail just now. So, yeah, I've got voice, four voicemails from the same guy I told you didn't answer my questions. I'm sure he still has them, but I'll... I'll take that in consideration. I'm not going to re-go back and do my show after blasting him a new asshole because he never listens to my podcast, so I don't have to worry about that. If he does, oh, well. So, anyway, yes, I'm back on air. I'm, like, watching myself right now because I'm, like, got this little camera up on my my uh, phone. I mean, my phone. What am I talking about? On my computer. Because, you know, my monitor, it's a, it's an Apple monitor. It actually has the built-in camera. So I was going off about Green Inferno. I definitely recommend it. The whole premise, though, was that I thought it has, like, an irony to, to it as well. I definitely recommend it. I know the film got, like, the most horrible ratings. So, you know, hey, I'm entitled to my opinion. So I'm definitely using that right now. 
But the whole thing was you got these, again, these Bernie Sanders slash Hillary Clinton tree hugging people who just feel like they're being victimized, you know, um, on any uh, on every given situation by the white male. And you got these people who are, are the the new tree huggers and fighting for rights in these colleges, all of them brutally get themselves eaten alive and killed by these cannibals who they try to support in this rainforest. They all of them get brutally killed. And the only one that survives is one girl. And the irony of the whole thing is she kind of doesn't learn her lesson in many ways. She has these nightmares and being a sole survivor, the only reason she survives is she friends this little kid who's uh, is I caught myself this little kid who is one of these cannibals by making friends with him. She has like this little flute necklace around her neck that her mother had given to her, and I guess presumably the character's mother had passed away, and she just keeps that as a memory token. That necklace saved her life. This little flute necklace that actually did play. It was like a little little metal recorder or flute. Because she plays it for this little kid who is, again, he's a cannibal. And these people, their their survival is in on eating humans. They're cannibals. But the, the she plays this little flute around her neck. The boy actually friends this girl and he helps her escape escape at the very end of the film after everybody else gets killed now the person who got you know initiated this group did it basically and this is where the political party even comes in he did it for money like he was trying to stop these rainforests from getting torn down and he said well listen you know what i basically just did it just for political reasons but he says i know it wasn't going to make any change so he basically got everyone killed in the group there was like 20 people on this quest to stop the rainforest from getting destroyed. And he says, listen, I'm not going to change anything. He said, I basically did it for the money. And he said, I, I did make a political statement. That part definitely did help our situation. But he said, I knew that this going into this rainforest forest was not going to get us anywhere besides politically to just get us our, our belief on, oh, we got to save the rainforest. It's just going to... It's going to stop it from happening. He says, no, it's just going to prolong it for about a week. That's uh, He knew that coming in. He ends up like, after the girl escapes, he asks this girl who, this main ringleader, as I like to call him, in the character in the movie, he's still imprisoned in this travel camp, and he asks, hey, are you going to help me escape too? And the girl just ignores him because this guy got every one of these people killed on this blind mission to save a rainforest and for her to try to save this tribal, primitive tribal group that you can't touch. You can't change them. So there's many different levels. You can take it from either side on where the film was going. But she leaves the guy behind. And when she gets back in, in the very end of the movie, the main character... When she gets back to civilization, she just says she covers up the whole thing. That's what's kind of funny. And the school board and her father asked, well, well, we heard that that tribe that you encountered, the the character Justine, they asked her, is it Justine? The girl, the main char- uh, girl character. Oh, they said she's the spouse of Eli Roth. That's pretty funny. The girl who played the main character was also Eli Roth's wife. I didn't know that. But she did a she did an incredible job. So he actually got his own wife to play in the film. She's only 26. I don't think he's that old either, Eli Roth. So I'm just curious now how old he is. Yeah. Oh, wow. He's 43. She's 26. I didn't know Eli Roth was 43. It's not no big deal. I thought he was a lot younger. But I really like him. He's a good he's a good director. I know he was on Stern years ago. Anyway, she comes back to civilization and she basically they ask her, "Okay, we heard that 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 group of that tribal group that you were in, they were 
cannibals. And he, he said, did you did that school board ask him, did you encounter anything of these people being cannibalistic? Or did anybody get cannibalized during his quest? And she said, no, they all got killed in the in the plane crash. None of them were tortured. And he, she said, quote, unquote, these people were very peaceful tribal group that were minding their own business until the, uh, the people going in because, you know, she basically lied about everything. She said that they the 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 that though that tribe of these headhunters, which did cannibalize each and every one of those people on that on that trip, the these people from that college, she basically said, oh, no, they all died in the plane crash. And that none of them got cannibalized and that that tribe of cannibals were very peaceful people. They were very friendly. In fact, they saved my life, even though they were going to try to kill her, sacrifice her or kill her and cannibalize her as well. So and then she just never even said she just pretended that the main guy who basically almost killed her on this trip, that he also was killed in the plane crash. So she and then the guy was apparently at the very end of the film, if you watch past the credits, they were kind of insinuating the guy was still alive. He was still in that country. And that because uh, the guy's sister said, oh, you know, I, I caught him on a GPS and I seen that he's still alive. Do you know anything about his what happened? He's still stuck in that rainforest with that with those cannibals. And she just kind of ignored it. So her whole thing was, I guess, these this group of people on this college campus who are these Greenpeace people basically fucked with her and she just denied the fact just to save this this group of cannibals, this tribe of cannibals. She just said, oh, well, they had nothing to do with it. They were just innocent people, bystanders, and they got plowed down by the people destroying the rainforest. So she lied about everything at the very end of the film. So it was kind of like a a twist at the very end of the film where, you know, the people who she went on the trip with who were really nasty to her, the most of them, there was only like two people who were actually taking her side, but the ones who were really nasty to her got all cannibalized. And she said, oh, they got killed in the, in the, in the rain. They got killed in the plane crash. And the main guy, she just let him suffer in that tribe. Basically he would have been cannibalized eventually as well. But the bottom line is, you know, you can look at that film and say, oh, that's not a realistic film and stuff like that. And it's like, no offense, that film is, again, that's a very realistic film. And I think anything that Eli Roth has done has just been the, the, the difference on the level of his film work compared to other people's film work. His movies are based, again, on reality, not this science fiction. His is b- based on fiction. And... I can't say enough about that. If if you can't see that his films, the the possibility of this happening can can happen, you're you're really dumb and blind yourself. So that being said, you know I I just I just I don't know. I mean I just had to mention it. I want to watch these blind dead films. I'm going to try to start watching it because I really like that one. I want to watch the other one the one prior to the one I watched. And now I have to, I can watch without commercials. It's 30 bucks for all the films. So yeah. And I can't say it enough, but Eli's Eli Ross films are horror reality as opposed to just these really, really exaggerated science fiction films that have make no, it can't possibly happen. No, this can really happen. And why I'm saying that, because you do got these tree-hugging lovers, these people who believe in Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton, and they they just thrive on this, like, oh, well, you know, you don't understand. It's Trump who's the bad person. It's the Republicans who are horrible and stuff like that. They have no grasp on reality. And I've said this in prior shows that these same people, though, are going to be the people who get us killed or themselves killed just on their own stupidity, just like these people in this movie 
where you know these same people because you this this is happening folks in real life look at the people from the united states to go over to fight on the side of the terrorist these muslim terrorists and the isis people that's happened time and time again and what happened to these people in that go over there they end up wanting to come back home they can't because they end up getting tortured and obviously they get themselves killed it's the same exact thing that Eli Roth was slapping in your face in that fucking movie of Green Inferno in a different situation, but it's the same outcome. That's why I have to give that movie two thumbs up, by the way, too. So I went off about that. I want to read it through a couple of these stories that I did put up. There was one from Young Conservatives. It was actually put up by Rush's. Rush put it up on his website, but he was talking about, I think, today. It's what it, what it sounded like. And it says, breaking news, sheriff deputy killed two others injured in a de- deadly Colorado shootout. That happened today. Reports are coming in on the sheriff deputy killed during a vicious Colorado shootout. Two other deputies also injured in the fray on, from Fox News. So that was actually today, though. So it keeps on saying the same thing. And it said a wounded Wednesday in a shootout 45 miles southwest of Denver, Colorado. So the suspect also killed in in gunfire. Jefferson County Sheriff's Officer Spokesperson Jackie Kelly told the Denver Post. So you got all these people that are against the police. They're killing them. I mean, this is this is just total anarchy in our country and not in a good way. There is no good anarchy anyway. So I just found that and I posted it up earlier. Alrighty, some of my stories actually aren't open up. The one actually I wanted to talk about. Now, this is another thing on just the stupidity of our country, our world, whatever. And it was from the Daily Mail the other day, and I had to repost it from my own. I had to like my, you know, share it with myself because it got buried a little bit. And I think I did not mention this other day. From the Daily UK Mail, necrophilia and incest should be legal, says Swedish Liberal Party Youth Wing but are accused of being laughable nitwits by the party senior. So here you go again. It's the same thing that Eli Roth pointed in his movie. It's the same thing I just mentioned about these people who go over the fight on the, on the ISIS coalition against the U.S. It's the same liberal type of mind frame in Sweden that think that uh, necrophilia fact, um, Doing basically having sex with dead people or underage people should be legalized. I'm not even kidding. This was posted back on, let me see the date, the 22nd. That was like two days ago. Okay, it says, Necrophilia and incest should be legal, says Swedish liberal. Again, these are the bullet points. Filed motion to push for legalization of sex between consenting Basically, consenting, not even adults, but just consensual that, okay, the kid wants to have sex with an adult, they should be allowed to. Liberal Youth of Sweden and the Youth Wing of the Swedish Liberal Party. See, it says liberal. Senior party members lashed out calling Young Wing nitwits. They call them nitwits, which they are. Don't get me wrong. They are. Right, it's one thing that's not going to open up. Not a big deal. Don't have that much to talk about anyway. I'm trying to look what else I have up. Oh, this is what I found. It was from uh, the smokingguns.com. I haven't used that in a long time. I think I did before. Buster, cop caught masturbating to cell phone porn in patrol car, is arrested for misconduct. Investigators alleged the Marshal Hardin, 41, was seen by a witness pleasure himself in the cruiser in mid-December. I think that's pretty funny, at least. But you know why they, they publish those stories like that? Look, look there there you go with the cops. They're so bad. Look at that. They're masturbating in their cars. Who gives a fuck? Opposing Jews, I got a story. Grandfather who impregnates 11-year-old granddaughter learns his fate. Now, here we go again. I'm not saying this is right. This is completely fucking wrong. Don't get me wrong. But I tell you, if the shoe was on another foot and it was a hot looking woman who impregnated, got impregnated by a a 14 year old boy, 
that would be, why are you making a big deal out of it? This is so cool. That man's got a notch in his belt, even though he's 14 years old. And the woman would only be serving a prison sentence if even if it was a life imprisonment sentence for something that was really bad. It would end up being only like a 12-year sentence that the life imprisonment would last 12 years. Or it would be just house imprisonment for one year or six months, 12 months, 12 days. Who knows? So let me read this real quick. This was posted on the 24th, which is today. I thought so. A, it's kind of funny because I'm thinking of Hannah Montana. A Montana man has been sentenced to 200 years in prison after he impregnates an 11-year-old granddaughter and molests the girl's younger sister. So here you go. Woman gets six months, 12 weeks in prison for sexually assaulting the male. This guy who impregnates an 11-year-old gets 200 years in prison. But there's no double standard there. I just want you to see that there really isn't. Okay, if you believe that. This guy, Mikhail Shane Prudit, 55. I know, I can't even. I fucked up that name in uh, five different directions. Was arrested in June after an 11-year-old girl was told she was 32 weeks pregnant. The girl said that she did not know she was pregnant because I didn't know what pregnant felt like. She originally told the doctor she had sex with a 14-year-old boy at the county fair, but when doctors noticed the dates didn't match up, she told the truth. She admitted her grandfather had told her to make the story up. So in July 2014, a girl girl's younger sister, who was nine years old, told her biological mother she witnessed the grandfather sexually assaulting her sister. See, that's another thing. I'm not saying it's right, but even if it was, I'm not saying that this was, but if it was even consensual, automatically, when it's the man having sex with a female that's a kid, it automatically becomes an assault issue. If it's a woman in the same situation having sex with a little girl, a, a little boy, then it's not, you don't hear that word terminology used as frequently or at all as being an assault. You don't see that word at all. It's, it's, they use other terminology, but nothing that seems so harsh. So I'm just putting that into people's heads because it is the truth, by the way. So let's see. She said that the, in, in an interview that she, she would sometimes wake up and watch through the peak hole in her bunk bed as the prudent molester, uh, the prudent molested her older sister. The nine-year-old girl told Malition that the prudent sexually uh, uh, sexually abused her by kissing her privates and telling her to keep it a secret. So it said this eleven-year-old girl gave birth. In August, so the girl had the kid. So the bottom line is, I'm not saying it's right. Please do not take it that like, oh, yeah, well, men should be able to get the same sentence for a sexually assaulting a a young little girl. Well, that's not my point. My point is that when you see women assaulting males, they get away with it, and it just becomes a slap on the wrist. They don't use the word assault. They don't call it a sexual predator. They call it something else. And most of these cases, I told you, most of the cases, they get like a month in house imprisonment, these women, and then they get away with it. So the only way, the only way this fucking stuff is going to stop happening with these women having sexual intercourse with young boys is if when you give them the same sentence, when you find a woman who's a school teacher, a mother, or a stepmom having sex with a 11-year-old kid or a 13-year-old kid or a 14-year-old kid, when you give them them a 200-year sentence, you're going to see that stop probably pretty quickly. You're not going to hear about it as much. Right now, you hear about it constantly because they know they're going to get away with it. I'm telling you, because if I knew I could walk into a store and this is something totally different and just basically take whatever I want off the store shelves and walk out of the place... And then the cops come up to me and say, well, you know what? You really shouldn't do that. They give me a slap on the wrist and say, just just, just don't do it again. 
I'm going to go, yeah, okay, I won't do it again, and I'll do it again because I know I can get away with it. So that's the same thing on any level. If you're a minority or if you're a, you know, well, women are minorities technically, but if you know you're going to get away with something you have just done, even if, it, if I go up to a, a store clerk, pull out a gun, shoot them dead bullseye in the forehead, knock out their brains out of the back of their head, and then somebody comes up to me, authority, and says, well, you know what? You really should have done that. So I'm going to give you a slap on the wrist. You're going to have to spend one month in your house with an ankle bracelet. And after that, we're going to take it off and just just don't do it again. Do you think that's going to stop me from not doing the same criminal act again? Probably not. I'll probably figure, well, God, these people are so fucking stupid. I'll just do the same thing again. I'm using it as, as really exaggerated situations. But I'm telling you, this is exactly... In, in a different sense, what's going on in our country. And it just annoys me. I'm not going to read it, but I do want to thank the person who did put it up on Facebook because they did hear it on Stern. Stern, I'm sorry. They heard it on Rush Limbaugh yesterday. Or maybe it was today. Maybe I was listening to today's show. I didn't look at the dates on because I listened to it after he does his first hour and he puts it up. So it could have been from today's show because let's see when this was posted. The person did find the article that Rush Limbaugh was talking about, about this girl named Chelsea, who is a Bernie Sanders supporter. She's a a woman, and she was, like, crying. She sounded like a little kid. It says, meet Chelsea. She recently hosted a phone bank for her boy, Bernie Sanders, and she completely had taken a back. She was taken aback by the bad nature of Republicans and Trump supporters in the Super Tuesday state. And while she never gotten emotional o- over politics before, she's still lear- learning and wants everyone to know that the people who are voting for him, Trump, are really sick people that refer to human beings as Q, uncontrollable cry and uh, uh, being. Let me reread that, though. She says they're really sick people to be human beings. And then it says. This is where I fucked up. It says, on cue, she uncontrollably started crying as animals and and uh, referring to us, us Republicans, as animals and made her physically, physically Ill, ill. Sorry, I was burch, uh, burping too. So she got all upset, this woman, and she, like I said, on cue, she started uncontrollably crying, talking about how horrible... The Trump and the Republicans are to Bernie Sanders. And that would also probably also include Tom, uh, Ted Cruz, Tom Cruz, Ted Cruz. And by the way, I hope this is true, but they're saying if Ted Cruz does not make it. Now, I heard that Ted Cruz might be picked up by if if he gets the GOP. If, if, if Trump gets the GOP, he wants to pick up. Ted Cruz as vice president, which would be really cool. But I heard something even better yet. They're saying that some guy called in the Rush Limbaugh and he says he heard that they're trying to consider of getting Ted Cruz to run for that open in position to uh, replace the person. I can't remember his name who just passed away on the Supreme Court. And if that would happen, let me look up his name because I, I vaguely remember it. So I'm just making it as simple as possible. Scalia. So if when Scalia passed away, they're trying to say, and now Rush brought this up also, by the way. It was either yesterday or today. When Scalia passed away, which Rush caught the Democrats and President Obama in a fucking lie, that... That happened, the same situation, somebody from the Supreme Court passed away when, when I think it was, oh yeah, when President Bush was still in office, that one of the Supreme Court justice people passed away, and the Democrats said, quote, unquote, well, you're not going to replace that person as president because you're going to almost be out of office. That's not fair for the next person who might be, might be president. That should be up to the next president to decide Who's going to be picked to be the Supreme Court justice replacement? 
So now they're saying with Obama, well, that's not fair. You know, now that Scalia passed away, you know, you can't, we should be able to pick who's going to be the replacement because President Obama is still president, so he should be able to pick it. So it changed from with President Bush, you're not allowed to pick our next Supreme Justice replacement, to... Oh, yeah, that's not fair because you're picking on Obama. You know, he should be able to pick the uh, next candidate who's going to replace the person uh, for Scalia in the Supreme Court justice. That's that's a double standard. That's a you're being a hypocrite, you fucking assholes on the left. And they they don't they don't see anything wrong in that. They think what they're saying is legitimate. And, you know, hey. You know, they're, and they're deny it. They're going to deny the whole fucking thing. That's even that's even better. So I just I just don't understand people like and then people are going to vote for either Hill. Well, if Hillary's going to probably get it. Like I said, Rush thinks that's going to happen. Not Bernie Sanders. It's going to be Hillary because she's got it in the bag no matter what she says. So and and people just don't understand. This is why a lot of people are going to vote for Trump on both the left and, I mean, on the Republican and the Democrat side because they're both fed up with both parties. And the left, the the Democrats just lie so fucking badly that even the people on the Democrat side are going to be voting for him because they're just so fed up with all the bullshit. And now they're just, they're, they're contradicting themselves over and over again with all this stupid bullshit. The newest one saying that, you know, basically... Oh, wow. Video shows shoplifter being taken into the ground. I wonder if that's the one my friend was talking about. I might even hit the news about the lady getting strangled. Huh. I'll have to send it to him. So anyway, yeah, I just find the whole thing extremely amusing that you know, if it's Obama, then he should be okay on picking the next Supreme Court justice person. But it's not okay when uh, Bush was not allowed to, when he was in when he, when when he was in that situation. Oh, you're not allowed to do anything about that. But now that it's Obama. Oh, that's being racist. That's not right because he's a Democrat. He's a black man. That's not fair. What are you gonna like? I don't know. And it, it needs pe- And there's so many people. I mean, it's not even. Like, it's by a landslide that the Republicans, if they get in the House by November, that we get a, a Republican president, it's not going to be a, by a landslide by any means. It's going to be by a close margin. That's what really scares me in our country, I'm telling you. So, that was the last story I had. I had one. I wish I figured out where I, I got this from. I got this off... Okay, Carla Helens, she's really cool. She's a hot-looking lady, too. She's online right now on Facebook. I probably messed up her name, too, so I apologize. I really like her, though. She's really she's a really hot-looking lady. She's from around, like, my neck of the woods in, in Pennsylvania, I guess. Uh, what did I say? It's Carla. It looks like Helens. She's like She goes to all these comic book conventions and stuff, too. And uh, science fiction convention. She's a hot looking woman. But she puts up like really cool stuff. So she found something. And I'm looking for it now. Where this wacko, not Carla. I'm not, I'm not talking about her in any sense because she's really cool. She found some fucking video and she says, like, she wrote the WFT, what the fuck? And it shows this video of this lady who's running around in her car because I heard the person who's videotaping it on their cell phone. This woman's driving around in circles in, in her car. Like, she's literally driving in the heart of a, a fork in the road in traffic. She's driving in circles, and she's smashing in the cars. Then she smashes into a police car, and then she vun- eventually just drives off, of, uh, off the road onto off a bank. And Car- Carla wrote, like, what the fuck's going on here? And I thought it was really funny, but I have to thank Carla for that video because I might just leave it at that because that was so cool. Now, again, I told you about a friend earlier. He's not answering my questions, but Denny sends me a video. It says, video shows shoplifter being taken to the ground and it's uh, by the throat. There is a dra- dramatic 
body cam video of a suspected shoplifter being taken to the ground by the Pasco County Sheriff Deputy in Wesley Chapel. So it isn't the same story, but it was almost like what this friend told me where this lady where he works, uh, a, a fellow supervisor, she's she's basically uh, bad news and always caused him havoc. She actually almost got strangled to death by the shoplifter themselves. But you won't hear about that. But when it comes to a, a police officer doing that, you're going to hear it like sevenfold over. So anyway, I'm moving my mic back over. Yeah, I'm done for today on doing my show. So I just mainly was, again, I want to talk about, I wanted, to, which I did, the Green Inferno. That's why I'm doing a show again today. And then, like I said, I'll probably maybe even do a show tomorrow because now I got those blind dead movies. It came in a casket, came in a large box, actually, of these movies. And it looks really cool. Actually, the casket itself, I'm like trying to look for it now. The casket itself isn't that big. So, because these are like Blu-rays inside, or DVDs inside there, so they made it not too big, but the box that came around the casket was really big, and it was only 30 bucks. and trust me, if you like old school, not over the top with violence, but just basically very entertaining films, I would definitely check out those Blind Dead trilogy, or four movies, they all come in one casket, literally, and it's like 30 bucks. and I watched the second one already, and I really loved it. These movies are shot from a, a director from South South America, and the guy does a really good job, at least on that one film. I'm hoping the rest are just as good. I like them better than those Italian horror films. I don't like those at all. Well, I like them a little bit. I can't say I hate them. They're pretty entertaining, but not as good as, as these movies of The Blind Dead. So thank you very much. It is now 4.30 because there was a little bit of a breakup on my show, so I was out off the air for a few seconds, a few minutes. So thanks again if you're listening. Get other people listening. And I am signing off and now. This is I, Walter, on this. What is the date? Well, I mean the day. I mean the day. It's Wednesday. It's the 24th of February. So thanks again. Everyone have a good afternoon. I'll, I'm signing off for now again. Thanks. Thanks.